Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we'll be going over scheduling backups for your VMs and containers in Proxmox. Now, I cannot stress how important it is to have a solid backup plan in place for any IT infrastructure, whether it's your home lab, an enterprise server, or even just your own personal computer. That being said, I like to implement a good backup policy even in my home lab testing environments. Proxmox has a very good way of creating and handling backups built right in, so we'll be setting that up now. First off, you'll need to have a place to store your backups. I'll link my video on configuring different types of storages, just in case you aren't quite clear on that. I do recommend that the storage that you use for backups is located somewhere other than on the machine itself, but for the sake of this video, we'll be using a locally configured drive for backups. Regardless, all other steps should be the same. So we have our storage ready and added here in Proxmox. That would be the backup storage here. The first thing we want to do is make sure that it's able to store backups. And here we see under the content that it is able to store the backups. You can check that also by going up to your data center and to storage. And then under the backup storage here, you can see that under content, vzdump backup file is an allowed type of content. And while we're here, let's also discuss retention policy which in Proxmox is configured on the storage itself. Retention policy basically determines which backups and how many of them will be kept. So go ahead and select the backup storage, click edit, and then go to backup retention. Here we have a few options. If you check the keep all backups box, it won't delete any backups unless you manually go in and delete them yourself. This would be great if you had unlimited storage, but for most of us that's probably not feasible, so we'll leave that unchecked. Down here, you have the option to select which backups to keep from any given time frame. The default option is to only keep the last backup made and to delete all older ones as new ones are created. How you set this is entirely up to your own preferences, but personally, I like to set it to keep the last two, and then one daily, two weeklies, and one monthly. In my production environment, older backups are kept in an offline storage media that I attach and run at least once a month. So in reality, my backups go back much further than just the retention policy. We'll hit OK. And once you've set your retention policy, we'll go down here to Backup, still under our Data Center tab. And here is where you'll create the actual backup jobs and the schedule that they run on. Go ahead and click Add. This brings up a menu with many options for managing backups, several of which are self-explanatory, but let's go through them anyways. You can select a node, which will narrow your VM and container options down to a specific node if necessary. The storage is the target storage that the backups will be stored in. In our case, that will be the backup storage we've configured, but it can be any storage added to Proxmox that's allowed to store backup files. Under day of the week, you can select which day or days you would like the backup to run automatically. I usually select every day, just so I can keep a couple of daily backups for when I inevitably mess up something and need to restore. The start time is entered in a 24 hour format, and it would be the time that you would like the job to run. I'll set the backup to run at 3 a.m., which will make it less likely to cause any disturbances. Under selection mode, there are four options. Include selected VMs will do just that. It includes the VMs that you check the box next to down below. You can also choose backup all, which will backup everything on the selected node or even the entire data center. Pool based allows you to backup pools. However, we don't have any of those configured at this time, so we can't do that. And finally, there's exclude selected VMs, which allows us to backup everything but the VMs that we select below. This is helpful if you have a special backup job set for a handful of less important VMs and you want to make a separate backup job with different rules, but you want to make sure that any newly created VMs are automatically included in this job so that they don't go without being backed up until you determine manually which backup job they should belong to. I like to use this option as my catch-all option for the VMs that aren't necessarily as important as others, but I still want some sort of backup kept for all of them just in case of a catastrophic failure. For the time being, I'll just use all here, and we'll back up everything. Up here, you can enter an email address to send backup notifications to, and below that, you can choose whether to send a notification always or only on backup failure. Here, you'll set the compression type. ZSTD is the default, which I usually leave it at, as it offers good compression as well as the use of multi-threading. Then you have the mode. There are three options, which I'll paraphrase from the Proxmox documentation. Stop mode briefly pauses the VM, resulting in a slightly longer downtime, but a higher data consistency for the backup. 
Snapshot mode provides a lower downtime for the machine, but at a slight risk of data inconsistency. Suspend mode is used more for compatibility and suspends the VM before calling the snapshot mode, which gives both a longer downtime as well as a slight risk of data inconsistency. It's recommended to use the snapshot mode instead of suspend mode whenever possible. For most cases, I recommend the snapshot mode, which is the default. Personally, I've never had any data consistency issues with restoring from a backup. However, if that's a concern for you, you might instead go with stop mode. And finally, you can enable or disable the job by using this checkbox. And now I'll hit create to create the job. Now that the job is created, it will run at the scheduled intervals. You can also execute a manual backup by selecting the job and clicking run now. I'll go ahead and do that and then select yes. You can monitor the progress of the backup job by going to the tasks and double clicking. Since we're backing up everything, this will take a little bit. So I'll go ahead and skip ahead to after it's done. Now that the backup has been run, we can view the backups one of two ways. The first is to go to one of the machines themselves under your node, and then to go down to the backup tab. Here you'll see any backups made for this machine only. The other is to go to the storage under your node in which the backups reside, and click the backups tab. You're able to restore a backup from either of these locations. Restoring is fairly simple. You simply click on a backup and then you click on the restore button in the top left. Then it'll bring up a menu which allows us to select where to restore to. We can also change the VM ID, which effectively allows us to make a clone from the backup. If you do this, make sure to check the box next to unique down below so that it generates new things like MAC addresses for the machine. And then you can check the other box next to start after restore to start the machine after it is restored. And if you like, you can set a bandwidth limit in megabytes that will limit the speed at which the backup is restored. This option is useful if the hard drive that you're restoring to or restoring from are currently in use and you would like to limit the throughput as to restrict the impact on the performance on the hard drives themselves. Let's go ahead and close out of here. The last thing I'll go over is the prune group option, which allows you to prune away old backups based on the machine and its set of backups. So let's go to the top, click on prune group. This is a manual action and doesn't save into the backups actual configuration. It's simply there in case you need to clear up some space. In the menu, you'll see pretty much the same options as the retention policy. And from there, you can choose which backups to keep. This is what you would use to manage your backups if you selected keep all backups in the retention policy settings. Well, I believe that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.